Our object lesson comes to us from Warwick the Mule. One day a gentleman was driving along and he was trying, he was lost and he was trying to find his way. And as he was driving, he began looking at his map and he became distracted and his car ran into a ditch. And uh, he was okay. However, the car was stuck and, and could not get out of the ditch. And so the man got out of the car and he walked down the road and he got to a farm. And when he got to a farm, he saw this old farmer. And there he had, uh, uh, next to him, he had this mule. And the mule was looking haggard, uh, but then the man needed help. So he said to the, the, the farmer, uh, can you help me? My car is stuck. And so the farmer said to him, don't worry about it. Warwick can get that car out for you. And the man looked at the mule, and the mule looked really bad. Uh, but he said, hey, listen, we'll try anything once. And so what happened, he said, let's, let's try it, let's try it. And so the man brought the mule to where the car was, and he hooked up the mule to the car. And, and um, the next thing he did was he, he called out. He says, pull, Sam. Pull, Fred. Pull, Bill. And then he says, pull, Warwick. And all of a sudden, the mule picked up and just pulled the car out of the ditch, effortless. The man looked in amazement at what that mule, that, that haggardly looking mule was able to do. And, and, and he shook the man's hand and he patted the donkey and he thanked the man very much. But he turned to the man and says, uh, can I ask a question? Why did you call those names before you called Warwick? The man looked at him, he said, listen, he says, you see, Warwick is almost blind. And he doesn't see very well. But if Warwick believes that he is a part of a team, he will pull with all his might. The object lesson for this morning is this. Ecclesiastes 4 verse 12 says, If one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. With the burdens and challenges of life, pull with all your might, because you're a part of a team. There is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and all the heavenly angels are there to help you to pull. So pull with all your might. Amen. Shall we turn in our scriptures this morning to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3 and I'll be reading in your hearing verses 1 through 6. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eye, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. The title of the sermon for this morning is, What Did the Snake Want? Shall we bow our heads? Our Father God, which art in heaven, Lord, again, we thank you for your blessings. Now send your Holy Spirit to teach us, for Christ's sake. Amen. It is often believed that in the Garden of Eden, the first person to sin or the first being to sin was Eve. Uh, but I'd like to present to you an argument this morning that the first to commit a sin was not Eve. It was the snake. 
Now, we know what Eve wanted, why Eve ate the fruit. We know that Eve wanted uh, to shortcut the process of character development and go straight to being God. We know what Adam wanted. We know that Adam wanted Eve. And so what he tried to do was he tried to put God in a stalemate to say that, well, God, if you're going to destroy Eve because I've eaten of the fruit, you have to destroy me too. So he chose Eve over God. But the question is, what was in it for the snake? Why did the snake decide uh, to allow the devil to use him to try to destroy the couple in the Garden of Eden? What did the snake want? We're going to do some inductive or, or deductive reasoning this morning to try to see if we can come to some understanding as to what it might have been that uh, this snake wanted. But let's make an assumption first. Let's make the assumption that the snake was afflicted with the same sin nature as the devil. He had jealous, he was jealous, he had envy. And he had pride. Isaiah chapter 14, 12 through 14 gives us this description of Satan. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which doth weaken the nation? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into the heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. So maybe the devil chose the snake because the snake had the same sin propensity as he did. He, had, he was jealous. He was envious. And he had pride. So let's take a look at some of the things it could be that the snake wanted. What was in it for the snake? Maybe the snake wanted to have a voice so that he could commune between, he could enter into the communion between God and man. You see, when God uh, created the plan of salvation from the foundation of the earth, the devil was left out of the communion of the planning between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now the snake, the serpent, finds himself in the same position. He, he, God came in the cool of the evening to meet with man, and now the snake finds himself being left out of the communion between God. And man, and, and the devil promised that I will give you a voice if you help me to destroy man. I will give you that voice so that you can enter into communion with God and man. You see, God had given man dominion over the, 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 the plants and the creatures that he had created. Genesis 1.26 says, And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And the, the, maybe the snake wanted to have a voice so that he can enter in so that he can have something to say about it. You know, in our church today, it seems sometimes that we, we, we seem to be speaking, but nobody is listening. Sometimes we feel that our voices are not being heard, and, and sometimes we take different directions with our voices. Sometimes we become silent. And while we're silent, the devil uses that as an opportunity to come to us and to engage us and bring us into a, a situation that will help to further his cause. So sometimes we feel that we don't have a voice and nobody's listening to us. And we want to be a part of what's going on. We feel left out of the situation. And, and, and sometimes the devil comes to us. And he gives us a voice, but that voice is not one that builds, it's one that wants to tear down. But I want to tell you this morning that you have a voice. You don't have to depend on the devil to give you a voice. Trust God because I'm told the spirit, the spirit of prophecy in the Bible tells us that God hears our voices. He hears our faintest cry. What did the snake want? 
Maybe the devil promised him a voice so that he could enter into communion with God and man because he felt that he had a right to enter into. What did the snake really want? Well, 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 maybe if it's not a voice, well, maybe what he wanted to do is he wanted to take man's place. That is it. He wanted to take man's place. Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 11 through 17 says this, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, This is a description of the king of Tyrus, but it was referring to the devil. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, and the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. Workmanship of thy tabreth and thy pipes was perfect in thee in the day that thou wert created. Thou art the anointing cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created until iniquity was found in thee by the multitude of thy merchandise. They have fill the midst of thee with violence and thou hast sinned therefore I will cast thee out as profane out of the mountain of God and I will destroy thee O covering cherub from the midst of the stone of fire thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty thou hast Thou hast corrupt thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Maybe what the snake wanted to do was to replace man. You see, the snake was one of the most beautiful creatures that God had ever made. The snake was created with wings. And if he could speak, he would be better than man. You see, man couldn't fly, but man could speak. He could fly, but he couldn't speak. And so what he thought was, if I had it all, I would be better than man. And, and, and so the devil came to him and said, listen, man, I can help you. You already have the beauty. Wasn't that what the, the, the devil found himself? He got caught up in his own beauty. He began to think that somehow he was better than everyone else. He was better than everyone, even God in heaven, because of his beauty. And so the snake became uh, uh, caught up in his own beauty. And, and he thought, maybe if, if I could speak, that's the, the only thing that's left. And if I had a voice... I would be better than man and, and God would have to replace man with me. The spirit of prophecy, patriarchs and prophets says this, in order to accomplish his work unperceived, Satan chose to employ as his medium the serpent, a disguise well adapted for the purpose of deception. The serpent was then one of the wisest, most beautiful creatures on earth. It had wings and while flying through the air presented an appearance of dazzling brightness having the color of brilliance and burnished gold. Resting in the rich laden branches of the forbidden tree and regaling itself with the delicious fruit it was an object to arrest the attention and delight the eyes of the beholder. Thus in the garden of peace lurked the destroyer watching for his prey. Maybe what the devil promised the, the serpent or the snake was that if he gave him the voice along with his beauty and the voice he would be better than man and he could replace man. You see in life there's always someone who's always thinking that they could do what you do better than you if they had the chance. Maybe 
That's what the devil wanted. He wanted to replace man. Someone is always looking at you, trying to figure out what you do, and, 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 and they're looking. And as the serpent was lurking to destroy the couple, they're looking to destroy you so that they can replace you. They want to show that they can do things better than you. And maybe that's what the devil promised the snake. Maybe that was what was in it for the snake. If it wasn't that he was getting a voice so that he could commune with God along with man, maybe it was that the devil was promising to give him a voice so that he can be better than man. He can take the place of man. There's always somebody looking to destroy your Christianity. There's always somebody trying to look to destroy your talents and your abilities. Sister Miranda, there's always somebody trying to say, well, you know, I can do the piano better than Sister Miranda if they'll just let me do it. Somebody is always looking to take your place. And maybe that's what the devil promised the snake, that he will allow him to be able to take man's place. There's always somebody. And, and maybe that's what the devil promised, promised the snake. Maybe that's what was in it. What do you think, Brother Jason? I think maybe, maybe there's another consideration. Maybe there's another consideration. You see, uh, uh, Maybe the serpent or the snake wanted Eve. Maybe the creature that man should be comparing himself to is the snake and not the ape. You see, it's only the curse that made the snake look the way he does now. Maybe when the snake was created, of all God's creatures, maybe he was the closest one to the likeness of man. And when the snake got out there, he looked and he saw Eve, and he wanted Eve. And the only thing that separated him from Eve is the fact that he couldn't speak to Eve. And so maybe like Samson, he went to the devil and he said, devil, you give me a voice. He says, Give her to me, for she pleases me well. Proverbs 15, 5, 15 through 23 the, uh, tells us to drink water from your own well. Drink water from your own well. Be content with the wife of your youth. But maybe the snake, maybe the snake wanted to get Eve. You know how, how, how men tend to get restless, Sister Miranda, you know? They start talking about how, you know, maybe Mrs. Snake, you know, he, he started to feel that Mrs. Snake didn't understand him anymore. Hmm? And he needed Eve. And, and, and the only thing that stopped him from getting Eve is that he couldn't talk to Eve. Could be that the devil promised to give him the ability to wax eloquently so that he can woo the heart of Eve away from Adam. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May and summer's lease has all too short a date. Sometimes too hot the eyes of heaven shine and often is his gold complexion dim, and every fair from fair sometimes decline by chance or nature's changing course untrim. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of the fear thou ownest, nor shall death brag that thou wanderest in his shade when an eternal line to time thou growest so long as men can breathe or eyes can see so long lives this and this gives life to thee maybe the devil promised to give him the ability to wax eloquently so that he can reach out and take eve away from man you know there's snakes in the church, don't you? You know there's snakes in the church. They're looking to try to take what does not belong to them. 
And they come and, and they try to prey upon uh, on the women in the church or even the men in the church. And they come and, and, and they try to wax eloquently. Talk about, you know, he says, he says, there is in every living being a quality of loneliness so great it must be shared as company is shared by lesser beings. So know then by this that in immensity there is someone lonelier than you. And they come and they whisper in the air of those who find themselves lonely and in need. And so maybe what the devil wanted, what, uh, what the snake wanted, was to try to win the heart of Eve. And, and, and because he had become discontented with his situation, with his relationship. I want to say this morning that as men, we need to be very careful, men, that we are being the protectors that we need to be so that our women understand that we're watching out for these snakes. We're careful that we understand that these snakes are in the church. So maybe that was what it is. I'm reminded of a song that says of the, the woman and the snake. A woman who was on her way to work one day. She says, the song says, down the path along the lake, a tender-hearted woman saw a poor half-frozen snake. His pretty colored skin had been all frosted with the dew. Poor thing, she cried. I'll take you in. I'll take care of you. Take me in, tender woman. Take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, tender woman, sighed the snake. She wrapped him all in co all cozy in a comforter of silk and laid him by her fireside with some honey and some milk. She hurried home from work that night and soon as soon as she arrived, she found that pretty snake she had taken in had been revived. Take me in, tender woman. Take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, tender woman, sighed the snake. She clutched him to her bosom. You're so beautiful, she cried. But if I hadn't brought you in by now, you might have died. She stroked his pretty skin and again and kissed and held him tight. Instead of saying thanks, the snake gave her a vicious bite. Take me in, tender woman. Take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, tender woman, sighed the snake. I saved you, cried the woman, and you've bitten me, but why? You know your bite is poisonous, and now I'm going to die. The snake responded, oh, shut up, silly woman, said the reptile with a grin. You Darn well, I was a snake before you took me in. Take me in, tender woman. Take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, tender woman, sighed the snake. Maybe what that snake wanted was to get his hands on Eve. But you know what happens when you take a snake in? Eventually, a snake is going to bite you. My sermon was short this morning. And the reason it was short is because the sermon was an exercise in deductive reasoning. We don't know what the snake wanted. We don't know if the snake wanted a voice. We don't know if the snake wanted to replace man. We don't know if the snake wanted to take Eve away from Adam. And it doesn't matter. You see, salvation is not promised to the snake. And the reason it doesn't matter, let's turn to Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. God made a promise of salvation, but the promise of salvation was not to the snake. So this morning, I want you to know that even though we may not know what the snake wanted, it doesn't matter what the snake wanted. 
Because God did not ask him a question of concern regarding the situation. Let's read in Genesis chapter 3 starting at verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the tree of the garden. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, here's a question, here's a question. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? That question of concern, God wanted to know what had happened with Adam. Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. And the Lord then said unto the woman, God turns to the woman and he says, question, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. But notice what the Lord did next. He turned to the serpent and the Lord said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, no question of concern. God didn't care why the devil did it because he, you and I are more important to God than anything else. So it didn't matter what the snake wanted. All that matters is God and God is concerned about you this morning concerned enough that he wanted to know what happened so that he could provide a way of escape and the Lord cursed the serpent but he gave to man in verse 15 he gave to him a promise of salvation I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. This morning there are snakes out in our congregation. There are snakes in our neighborhood. There are snakes that are, are in the world today. But it doesn't matter what those snakes want. It doesn't matter what they're looking for. It is what God has provided you with. And I'm encouraging you this morning not to allow the devil to, to rob you of the plan of salvation. Salvation is promised to all who would receive it freely from God. God did not ask the snake. Notice also, notice also that the snake must have also had the power to choose. Because God would not have cursed the snake had the snake been an unwilling party to this matter. So he must have had the power to choose. And so this morning as I close out my sermon, I would like to leave you with some points to ponder. We can't prove it because the spirit of prophecy nor the Bible expounds on it well. But I'm going to leave these points for you to ponder this morning. I need you to understand that neither the devil nor the snake has lost any of their power to deceive. If you allow them access to your life, eventually they will bite you. Ponder that for a moment. The Bible says, woe unto you, for the devil is come unto you having great wrath. Ponder this this morning. Where was Mrs. Snake when Mr. Snake was communing with Eve? Was she at home taking care of the children? Uh, maybe she was on the job trying to earn money to pay the bills. Uh, where was Mrs. Snake uh, when Mr. Snake was having fun beguiling Eve? Ponder that this morning. Uh, one more thing. Uh, p ponder this. Ponder this. The curse that fell to Mr. Snake also affected Mrs. Snake. I'll let that seep in a little bit because you need to understand that. 
for you to ponder. You don't see the snake crawling around and Mrs. Snake standing up on two feet, walking him along the road. Mrs. Snake looked just like Mr. Snake. Ponder that, the curse that fell to Mr. Snake also affected Mrs. Snake. Men, we need to be very careful of the decision that we make in God's church because whatever decision we make not only affect us, but the rest of our family. Women the same. The decisions you make in your home not only affect you, but it affects the others in your home. And understand, Mrs. Snake was innocent. But she still suffered because of what Mr. Snake did. Just points to ponder this morning. Just points to ponder. And I close with this appeal. Do not allow the devil or the snakes of this world to have access to your life. They will bite you because they have nothing to gain, but you have much to lose.